that one. Ah, right. There we are. I'm a visual artist that works with um, people's responses to the places that they're in, and I'm not going to talk about that. Um, instead, I'm going to talk about something I don't know anything about, which is blood groups. And um, the reason for that is that in each place, the distribution, the proportions of the diff uh, different blood groups are um, very different from one place to another. And 40 years ago, I was reading a genetics textbook, as one does, and discovered that there is um, very interesting links between linguistic uh, variations, cultural variations, and blood group um, variations. And the thing that I was told about was the boundary between the Melanesian and the Polynesian. Now, I don't know any, I only know one word of Fijian and one word of Tongan, but I'm told that across this boundary here, where the islands are close, there are his, uh, historical tensions and significant cultural variations. So I was interested in looking at the differences in these distribution of uh, blood groups. So I collected everything that I could from the internet, which is not necessarily particularly reliable. And um, if you look at Fiji and Tonga, you see, ah, yes, you can tell how different these dis No, um, of course not, because the numbers are too difficult to make sense of. But we can simplify those because we can go back, we can work back mathematically from the phenotypes, the, the blood groups, to the gene distributions. I'll use colloquial language, not the proper genetic language. So, um, for example, in Australia, you can, from these blood group distribution, you can see that about 23% of Australians have the A gene. And if you um, map that on the map, um, you get a very distorted picture of what's going on because there are actually three significant things with blood groups, so you have to draw three maps, or rather that's what people have always done. And I thought that was remarkably silly because if we look at um, a measure of where this proportion live, um, lives, lies between the smallest proportion we found and the biggest, then we get this sort of meter here. And if you look at the difference between Fiji and Tonga, for example, we can start to see these differences. But now we can't see the differences around the world because we can't put that on a map. Yes, we can because if you think of these three things as red, green, and blue, the RGB color space, then you can map these um, in, on a map and change, uh, funny changes in color might well indicate interesting cultural or linguistic changes and similarities of color might tell you something. So um, here is just a few of the the, the colour mappings, and you'll see Fiji and Tonga look very different. Australia and New Zealand don't look very different. So it's starting to tell us a few things, and um, Finland and Denmark, you'd expect them to be different because they're linguistically drastically different. Um, but hang on, Sweden and Norway, the Vikings from there settled in Iceland, and look, it looks like Ireland. I was very puzzled by this until Kit explained that there were hundreds of years of um, Icelandic raids in Ireland um, finding wives. So um, what I'm suggesting is that these colour differences and similarities can lead us to think, if we put this on a map, could lead us to, to um, interesting questions about culture. This has never happened. It would be a nice idea if it did. Um, we can also look at the differences in colour space. There's a, a distance in space. Um, I call it the sanguine genetic um, difference between things. And if we do that, we, can, we could get on a map automatically drawn boundaries between uh, different regions. And if we reduce 
our cutoff point, we get more and more indications of where there are changes. These are genetic changes, and we could use any genetic marker, but blood groups, you see, every hospital has the data. So we could very easily find this information um, from almost anywhere in the world. And if we do the ordering, if we go from smallest to largest of the A minus blood group, for example, the traditional way of mapping it, look, things that are very similar, like India and Pakistan, are a long way apart on the map. And they're separated by things that are very different. So if we order things in the way that they've been traditionally done, looking at the phenotype, the displayed characteristic, we don't get the information that we get by mapping it into three-dimensional color space. Now, all of that was done in HTML, JavaScript, so it's all on the internet. Um, there's a, a URL. You can play with it for yourselves. Um, the only problem is I've only coded it for Firefox. I'm sorry about that. 